Um, again, a big thank you all for taking the time to, to join us. Uh, this is your opportunity to learn, question, and really hopefully leave today with a really good understanding uh, of, of what you can do to um, move your officiating program forward. So with that, uh, and thanks to the officiating committee, I'll turn it over to Dave Howard for the presentation. Okay, thanks, Dan. So we'll uh, we'll jump right into things. Um, in 2012, about four years ago, uh, the PTs requested changes be made to update the officiating program, make it easier to get into the referees to get into the program, and um, Squash Canada board. Uh, responded to that and the Squash Canada officiating committee uh, the initial directive was that the program should be compatible with uh, long-term athlete development and long-term official development and we should be more competency based to align with the WSF program and we'll we'll definitely get into a little bit more of that as we move along in uh, September 2013, uh, the SCOCE released the framework for the new program, which is a club, local, provincial, national, and an online club-level certification course. And uh, that online course allowed individuals to get into the program uh, very quickly without going, without spending a day of their time. Uh, in an officiating clinic, although the officiating clinic, the certification clinics are still good and probably the best way to do it, but from a time effective point of view, uh, individuals would rather just go online and do their learning there. In uh, November 2013, uh, an expert panel was formed at the request of the Squash Canada Board of Directors, consisted of myself, Graham Waters, Joe Ellis, Barry Faggy, and uh, Wayne Smith. And we were tasked with implementation of the 2012 requirements. The, uh, we updated the uh, course and exam when the, the rule update came out in 2014, that was the online course, and the certification clinic. Um, we modified the existing assessment sheets to place more emphasis on competencies, and I'll be showing you that shortly. And we created a, uh, an officials database to allow referees and assessors to access not only their well, their their own information uh, allow the assessors to to access uh, people's information that they're assessing, and it'll allow them to see where they where they need to uh, develop or improve or how they're doing. Um, we fully documented the program through creation of a referee progression document which describes how you move through the uh, through the different levels local club provincial and national and we uh, modified the administration manual in a fairly major way to to align with this we've also uh, created a number of training modules uh, that are on our uh, on our we uh, officials website uh, assessor training course, turning and its variations, crossing the flight, danger zone, uh, injury, position advantage, ethics, improving explanations, uh, access interference, and swing interference. And and the reason we did that is if uh, if an individual is having trouble with a, a certain area or a certain competency, they can uh, go online and and look at uh, Look at a at a training module to see what they what they should be doing, um, and the other thing is that that uh, 
with these training modules, they uh, you can just go through them and 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 get get some consistency across across Canada into how we're looking at different uh, different competencies crossing the plate or whatever. Um, the the new program we develop it is com totally compatible with WSF program and the uh, LTOD model. The the competencies that we've included in the in the program are the exact are the identical competencies that that are in the WSF program. We may need to modify those at some point uh, if we find that. Uh, some of them aren't getting used very much, but but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, a ma a matrix has been developed to map referees from the old system to the new system, and I'll be showing you that uh, shortly. So the the, the current status of the program, uh, it's being rolled out by the PTs. Uh, we are responsive to any issues developing during rollout and will make any necessary revisions that we have to. Any uh, any amendments that we do make uh, will be communicated by Squash Canada, the officiating committee or or administration uh, to the PTs. Any uh, any questions on what I've what I've quickly rolled through to to this point? Hi, Dave. It's Brad okay. Burney here. Yes, Brad. Uh, in the, the PowerPoint, you mentioned assessment sheets, referee progression document, and administration manual, and online training modules. We would love to know how to access those, please. We're going to go through that. Absolutely. Thank um, you. It's going to cover that. So. Um, Program basics, uh, there are four categories of officials, club level, which is the old D level, local, which is the old C level, provincial, which is the old B level, and national, which is the old A level. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is there's no, uh, there's no numbers after these, so there isn't a D4 and a C2 and a B1 and an A1 with any of these. We've built the marking competency into each level so that uh, um, if you're a club level referee you'll be expected to uh, not be that good at marking but there are basic expectations we have and as you move from club to local, provincial, national, at national level uh, if you make a mistake in your marking that's not a good thing. So uh, th this competency is actually based into the built into the sheets. So the first thing uh, that we did as a group is we created uh, the uh, a new assessment form, and uh, I'm going to show you that now. The other the other thing that I'll mention, and and we'll, I'll show you uh, later on, all of these things are are actually on the uh, on the officials website so you can download this form from from the website so you'll see that uh, we have candidate what their status is who the assessor is what their status is uh, who's playing who the player level what round in the body is the, these are similar to the old assessment sheets um, so, so for uh, call number one, the referee said it was a, a yes let. The assessor said it was a no let. Uh, player A asked for it. Was it a difficult call? Yeah. And then you notice this this code area here. That's what's really new. Um, the code is uh, these competency codes 
down at the down in the bottom right. And so here uh, the code for the first call might be uh, front wall interference and uh, the score, whether it's a three ref, if it's a three referee system, what their uh, decision was and any comments. So the, the sheet is very similar to what it was before with the exception of this, uh, with this code. Now, the, if we go further down the sheet, here are all the, uh, here are all the competency codes. So if, uh, if a referee makes three, three correct front wall, uh, front wall interference decisions and no incorrect ones, then they've proved to you that they um, that they're competent in the front wall area in this particular match. So they would get a a tick a tick in the pass on this one. If uh, if they didn't show you that they that they did a good job on it, not to standard. And if um, if there wasn't enough evidence of whether they uh, whether they they make correct calls on front wall interference, then it'd be uh, not applicable, not accessible. The um, one big advantage of this system now is that uh, you could have a a five call match, which under the old system you haven't shown that you're, uh, you, you haven't shown enough to prove that you're good enough to go to the next level. Under the new system, you can get a tick box on the front wall competency uh, without the match being difficult enough to, to have proved that, you, that you're capable to move to the next level. So, uh, it, signature is is what we uh, what we've historically called it. So you don't get a signature on the match, but you can get a uh, you can get a competency tick, and we'll see where that comes into effect later on. Any um, any specific questions on on the sheet itself? Okay, so next I'll move on to the referee progression matrix. So the uh, the old system resides right here. Basically, everything was based on how you did in the match. Um, the new system. Uh, we've defined whether you should uh, watch some of the modules. Uh, there, there are exams on on some uh, on some of the requirements. Um, you can see here to become a club official, there's no match signatures required. Basically, once you do the online exam, you become a club level official. You don't need to know, you don't need to have any experience and you don't need to be competent in any of the, in any of the uh, identified competencies. To move from uh, club to local, you need to watch the, uh, uh, you need to do a live demo and a practice module. You need to have two consecutive uh, match signatures, and what we mean by consecutive is, or consecutive successful, what we mean by that is if the match is hard enough to uh, qualify to move to the next level and you perform successfully, then you get one, one tick of your two. 
if the next match you do uh, isn't difficult enough, and you may get a you may get some competency credit, but but it wasn't a, considered a a match signature to move up, that wouldn't count towards your consecutiveness. Um, then your third match, if you if you again perform to the same level as your first match, that would be two consecutive successful. So the one that's that doesn't count is in the middle. Now the one in the middle, the second one, if you failed it, uh, then you'd need two more consecutive successful. So um, the thing is, the old system, once you got once you got your five signatures, um, you move to the next level. If uh, you could you could get five successful and five fails, you would still move to the next level. On this in this system, we want you to be prove time after time that you're competent to move to the next level. Are there any questions on that? It might be a little bit difficult for some to understand, or are you okay with it? Any questions? Okay, so we've included an experience component moving from one level to the other, uh, and uh, experience is really what it's all about in the refereeing. Uh, the more you do, the better you get, and it's not just refereeing, it's most, most things in life. And uh, so we've included uh, experience, uh, referee experience in your requirement to move to the next level. And um, the, the individual can track their own experience. We're doing it on a uh, on an honor honor basis, we we're not uh, we're not forcing you to record all your games and and uh, put them into the database. Um, and then the competencies we to move from one level to the other, we're um, putting some uh, uh, putting some requirements on meeting competencies. So two consecutive successful on front wall direct access, play the ball, and swing in this case. And in terms of your marking ability, uh, moving from club to local, all we want you to do is use correct terminology. Um, Dave, Dave Spider had a question in the chat. Okay. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, that's because I'm not moving down far enough. Oh wow, there's a whole bunch of stuff here I can't see. Uh, Question is what you, standard does one need to assess a local category? As an assessor, you mean? That's what I assume, yeah. Yeah. So as an assessor, um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get into a lot more detail on that later, but um, basically you need to be a provincial assessor and we've changed the requirements to become a provincial assessor, made it a lot easier to do, um, and, and I'm going to highlight what changes we've made. So, so uh, I'll, the answer to the question is I'm going to cover that. Any, any other questions? Hi, Dave. It's Brad Burney again. Hey, Brad. Could you, uh, I see the, de the definition for a successful assessment down in the notes on the table, but could you review that for us, please? Um, so, what it, successful assessment is the same as it is now. You've performed. If you're a club referee, uh, you you have handled that match at a local level. What what we decide? What we deem to be a local level. And um, same moving between the different 
different categories. That that part of it is identical to the old system. So um, it would be like uh, if you're a, a C, which is provincial now, referee, and you get a, sorry, a C is a local referee, and it's like getting a B signature. And then when you get three B signatures, uh, you move up to B. So the, the signature part of it hasn't changed at all. It's the same. Okay, sounds good. So you might be covering this more with the assessor training, but there's nothing, uh, there, it's a subjective judgment of the assessor? Correct. It always has been. Now, as Thank you. Yeah, with the assessor training, we're trying to get all of our assessors to be assessing at the same standard. So that's that was one area of weakness that we identified, and uh, we are trying to get some consistency in uh, what what we consider a, a successful uh, signature. Okay, so that was the referee progression. Um, now I'm going to go to the equivalency under the new environment. Basically, um, if you're a if you're a D level referee with with no signatures, we map you to a club level, a basic club. If you're a C level, we map you to a local. B level, we map you to provincial. A level, we map you to national. So that's 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 if you have nothing in your book. That's a blank book. That's this is how we map you. Now, within three years of the implementation of this new system, credit will be given for signatures obtained under the old system. So, what what we're doing is. Um, Depending on how depending on how many signatures you get, and uh, uh, we map you into the new system with some credits. Uh, the um, the way we've done it is you're actually you're actually getting a little bit more than. Um, than just just a, a straight mapping. So we're giving you credit for for being competent in a bunch of areas, and we're uh, giving you we're giving you credit for having done um, having having the experience. And basically, once you, once we've mapped you into the new system, uh, if you look at how, what you need to progress to the next level. Um, it, it it's it's fair it's it's it should be a little bit easier to move to the next level than it than it would have been under the old system. So we're trying to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Uh, if we look at uh, So it, here, if, if they've got three three B, B signatures, we give them two provincial signature credits. We give them credit for their all their competencies. We give them 50 match credit. All they need here is one one provincial signature and one successful uh, marker assessment, and do 25 more matches. So that will move them a person with three B signatures to move. Uh, to move to provincial, would this is what would be required? Um, the trickiest one was actually the uh, moving fr moving from mapping from A into the uh, or from sorry from provincial to national, which is the old B to A. The um, the A as most of you will know, requires what's what we call a um, oh the name is uh, 
uh, name's escaping me now, a Superman signature anyway. Um, we've, we've dropped the, uh, what's that? Is it, is it used to be called an A plus. An A plus, yep. Yeah, drop. I, I lost A plus. Anyway, it used to require an A plus, which, in fact, it required two A pluses. One of the A pluses could be substituted by a whole pile of successful uh, uh, signatures. But that's a really hard thing to. It's a really hard thing to get. Uh, the A plus typically takes years to get. And um, we thought that was a bit unfair. We, we want to speed the process up, but we want to make sure um, people are competent. So what we've, what we've done is uh, we've, uh, we've required all the, we've given credit for uh, the A signatures, but, but we're looking at whether or not they've had any fails. And depending on whether they've had fails, we, uh, we make them do uh, conse get consecutive signatures. So same as, same as the, uh, the basic, uh, what we were looking at a minute ago, the, uh, this thing here. Um, so we're into the consecutiveness again. So when we move somebody from uh, from provincial to national, we want to make sure that they have that they can perform uh, consistently at a high level. Okay. Um, any uh, any questions on the mapping? How we're how we're going to map things over? Uh, oh, the the other thing that I'll mention is that well, uh, in the in the database when when a um, when somebody presents their booklet to you, uh, their old booklet, I would I would go into the database, enter them into the officials database, and give their credits to them at that time. So I I actually copy sections of their uh, of their book and include it in the um, included in the database as uh, evidence that they've got the credits that that we're giving them any uh, any questions on this stuff hi Dave it's Vienno hey Vienno uh, so the one question that I have is um, Moving from one level to the other, does one have to have a check mark on all those competencies that are listed in for that category? Like you could have a very good assessment, but the match, a particular match, would not present you with an opportunity to to for one of those competencies. Would you would that prevent you from moving having a successful um, signature for that assessment? No, not at all. Um, you could you you could have a very tough match with uh, with three of these competencies or even five of them uh, not being present. If you perform at the national level, you'll get a signature for the national level. That'll be in this section here. Uh, this this section, the signature credit. You will also get competency credits for the competencies that you did prove during that assessment. So you are going to have to prove that you're competent in all of these areas at some point before you move from one level to the other. And a good example of this would be, um, um, where can I find it? Where is it? Uh, injuries. If it, you're going to see an injury, um, maybe two, two or three times a year, and whether or not you're, whether or not uh, there's an assessor at the time is, uh, it's questionable. So you, 
at some point you're going to have to prove that you can handle injuries properly, but you don't have to prove it every match. You good okay. with that, Viano? Yes, thank you. Any other uh, any other questions? Okay. Moving right along. So now we're at uh, assessor progression. So the we've changed the um, assessor progression fairly significantly, um, more in the uh, provincial assessor area than in the uh, than in the um, national assessor. The responsibilities are similar, but. Um, the initial reason we had to change it is that uh, there were one of the requirements was to give a full certification well, observe a full certification clinic and then give a full certification clinic and very few uh, PTs are now giving them at all most uh, are most are getting the entry level in through the online course so, um, so how are we going to how are we going to create uh, assessors? Now, all the all the PTs are giving uh, rules clinics, so um, this this would give this giving a rules clinic would be a reasonably good test of um, of a, a provincial assessor candidate. Uh, by the way, we've renamed them from provincial examiners to provincial assessors and provincial uh, exa uh, national examiners have become national assessors but basically the same thing. Um, Dave, it's Dan here. I wonder if I could suggest you just to enlarge the document that's on your screen. Sure. Bottom right corner, Dave, where's right, Sue? Right at the bottom of the right. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Thanks. A little bit more. Okay. Just been lost a couple times. Yeah. Um. Okay. So what we've what we've done is we've said, okay, you, you we're we're going to test you on a rules clinic as opposed to the full certification clinic, although it says in here, or if you do a certification clinic, that's fine. But to make sure that you're competent as a, uh, as a trainer, we want, to, we want to have made sure that you went through everything that was in the full certification clinic, that you understand all of the rules, not just the part that you're going to be presenting at the rules clinic. So what we've added is you must uh, attend a consultation with the national assessor for a review of the certification clinic um, in preparation for this uh, shared rules clinic. And um, so what you need to do before was watch one, do one by yourself. Now our, now our uh, requirement is to meet with the assessor, go through everything, and then, uh, and then share presentation of a rules clinic. Um, so from a, from a time point of view that, that, uh, that the provincial assessor will, to become a provincial assessor, um, all you need to do is be a provincial or national referee, get nominated, same as before. Um, we've added, complete the assessor training course, which will take a couple of hours, but you can do that at home. Uh, pass the training exam with an 80% mark, which means you're, you should be competent as an assessor. And then, um, and then attend a as I said before, to end the consultation and present the rules clinic. 
So total time to become a provincial assessor, you've got a couple of hours to do the uh, course uh, and the exam, probably a few hours with your national assessor and giving an evening rules clinic. So as opposed to knocking out your whole day, we're probably down to sort of half a day of, of time to become a, an assessor. Um, any questions or comments on that? Now, what we've done away with is the uh, in the old system, if you were a provincial referee without any training at all, uh, you could upgrade somebody from from club to local. And the way the way that we've changed it is now you need to now you need to actually become a provincial assessor to do assessing. So we want we want to make sure that uh, you're trained to train. Everybody understand that? Okay with it? I hope. Yeah, that's good. Um, so the responsibilities haven't really changed of the provincial and the national assessor um, we haven't uh, we haven't changed the uh, we haven't changed the requirements of national assessors. They uh, must be now active, three years experience as provincial, nominated, and pass an assessment by another NA. So this is actually identical to um, to what it, what was in the old system. The only uh, difference now is when we map from the old system to the new system, we want to make sure that our national assessors uh, um, have taken the assessor training course. So uh, we, are, we are asking, well, strongly asking, I guess, making it a requirement. If you want to stay a national assessor, you will have to take the assessor training course and pass the exam. So it's it's uh, you will be mapped over, and you have a a, a certain length of time to uh, to take the assessor training course and pass the exam. And and so the requirements to move from a national examiner to a national assessor are a couple of hours of work. This is part of the mapping. If you're Brad Burnham. Uh, yep. Sorry to interrupt. If we go back a step to provincial assessor, just a clarification. Right. Provincial assessors are the only ones, or higher, are the only ones who can upgrade from a club level to a local level? Correct. Thank you. Um, the in the existing program, a B level could upgrade from D to C. This one, uh, a B level, which is a provincial uh, provincial referee, would need to take the uh, become a provincial assessor. And remembering in the existing, the old system. Uh, a provincial assessor couldn't upgrade to their own level, or sorry, a provincial referee couldn't upgrade to their own level. They would have to be an assessor. So in the existing system, a B referee, in the old system, a B referee could upgrade D to C, but they couldn't upgrade C to B. In the new system, a provincial assessor would be able to upgrade to their own level. So you could a provincial assessor a B a provincial level referee who is a provincial assessor would be able to upgrade from club to local to provincial. They obviously wouldn't be able to upgrade to national because they're not nationals themselves. Um, so the uh, 
Any other questions, comments? Dave, uh, Dan here. Uh, before you move to the next topic, uh, we've been holding a question here from Spider Jones. I wonder if I can uh, read that to you now since he's, he's done that on chat. Yep. Um, so yep. Spider asks, uh, there was once a set of slides available for a club pro visiting a remote club to review the primary rules. A teaser, if you will. Are these still available? Effectively a two-hour officiating 101 course. Um, Barry's the best guy to answer that. Unfortunately, he's not here. Um, we have a... Yeah, okay, go ahead, John. Um, there does exist uh, a what I call a, my mini clinic slide deck uh, that I believe came from Squash Canada, and it takes about two hours to present. It, it, it's just a, a quick overview of the rules, primarily for new players to the game and, and you know relatively new players. But there is a a um, what I call the mini uh, slide deck. Uh, I have it on my system, um, and I believe it came from Squash Canada originally. Yeah, we, we have at least two, now that, I, now that I think about it, we have at least two uh, mini rules clinics from the full certification clinic. Uh, like that presentation is still available. There's one on uh, interference, focuses on interference. And I think the second one is like a general what you're looking for. So the, the, answer, the answer to your question, uh, Spider, is I believe so. And if there isn't, we can do it fairly quickly. Because it, be, it would be a subset of the full clinic. Uh, Dan here. Uh, Dave and fellow committee members, do you think there's something that could be made public, uh, such as you know, on on the squashcanada.ca, for any player or visitor who wants to you know, receive a primer on the rules, or is that really a a private document for the uh, the person delivering the two-hour course? We could we will we could talk about that. Um, as a minimum, um, it should be under the assessor's uh, the assessor's uh, web access for the web web stuff, and uh, I can I can put it there, and I'll show you. Uh, well, when we get to that uh, database shortly, I'll show you where I put it. So the answer is yes, it, it should be available on our website or your website and uh, whether, whether it's available to everybody or just to the uh, assessors, we, we, we can discuss that. Any other comments? Okay, so we're we're flying right along here, trying to keep on schedule. So the uh, administration part of the uh, changing the administration manual was actually a very large feat and uh, there's all kinds of changes in it but what we've done is we've summarized the uh, summarized the document and uh, summarize the changes to the document without going into the absolute details on every change that we made. And this is the, I can probably expand this a little bit for you. This is the document. I'll just kind of go through the highlights. Okay, we reordered the uh, we reordered the the whole manual to more consistent. Um, we 
changed uh, change all the nomenclature from D to uh, club and uh, A to national, that stuff. Uh, we've added access to our uh, officials database, which I'm going to show you in a moment. There were some changes made to the uh, functional functions. The uh, officiating committee is now appointed rather than nominated. And I've already talked about changes we've made to provincial assessors, initial, initial certification. So we've added the online course stuff. Talk more about the upgrading, which we've pretty we've gone through today. There's also an area in the admin manual for accelerated upgrading, um, which there was in the old one too. So uh, if you get somebody uh, moving from a different uh, a different continent to here, they don't have to start as a D4 if they're a national referee there. We'll we'll do some. Uh, some due diligence to make sure that there are national quality, and if they are, then we'll uh, we'll make, uh, make them uh, national referees without too much, uh, without having to jump through too many hoops. Uh, quality control it really hasn't changed a lot; just the location moved. Uh, resource database. A lot of the stuff now is um, is found online or electronic. There are all kinds of forms and teaching aids that used to be sent out with the uh, as part of the uh, certification course, which we no longer send and which are actually no longer supported. So the uh, um, interpretation of the rules. Um, the rules have changed a bit, and the the documentation there is no documentation on uh, on some of the stuff that we handed out with our certification clinics, and um, and then we made some changes to the form section. So the uh, the detailed document is is available on our website, and it's it's got. It, it's uh, fairly comprehensive and goes into a lot more detail than this. Any uh, any questions? <clears throat> Silence deafening. Okay, so here's the. Uh, uh, the last last point for me, which which we can take as long as long or as short as you want on this one, but uh, it's uh, is the d officials database itself. So if you go to um, squashcanadaofficial.com, we've actually got two websites set up. One is uh, dev.squashcanadaofficial.com where we um, before we make any changes to the system we check them out in the development uh, in the development block here um, somebody up front was asking how you get on to this thing um, basically you click here on register Give us your name, your email, and a password, and you're on. From there, I need to go in and uh, set you up with some permissions. When when you when you register here, you will be um, you will be set up as a D4 uh, referee. Uh, you'll be set up as a basic referee. I'm going to log in here. Uh, 
Um, it, it, the password requirements are fairly stringent. So um, you may think it's a little uh, a little overkill, but uh, but our developers set it up this way, so we're going to live with it. it. You need to have at least eight characters, um, a capital, a capital and a small letter, a number, and a special letter. So all of those things need to be in your password. And uh, anybody that's having any trouble, I, I can uh, I can give you an example. Here's a Here's an example of a password which satisfies everything. Pound sign, capital S, Q, wash, one, two, three. That's eight characters. It has everything that's needed. So I'm going to log in here. You can see that um, there's uh, we've got a number of tabs up top. We go to uh, the assessments tab. This is a list of all the assessments that are in the database. There are currently, so there's 10 per page and five pages. There's about 50 assessments that are in it already. Let's look for one of mine. So I just search for DK, and here's a dummy assessment that was done by me. Um, these are the assessment details and uh, there's basically the, the assessor would enter this after the match. You can list all of the individual match uh, decisions. That's a little bit onerous so uh, what we tend to do is not fill this part in but just go to the uh, summary of competencies and fill in where uh, where you were successful and or unsuccessful. So an individual can go and search for uh, and here's the summary: great candidate, QCP National. That was the recommendation here. And um, you'll notice that all I can do as a, as a an individual is look at look at the results of my assessment. There's no edit here. It's it's just view or cancel. Now I'm going to log in to the main site. So it's called squashcanadaofficial.com. I'm going to log in. And if I look at the assessments, notice how they're all in red here now. Before, they, everything's black. This one here, everything's black. This one here, candidates are red. So I'm going to search for the same assessment. DK. Oh, got to spell D right. Still can't. Now you notice here, I'm Superman now, so I can edit this. Um, I can give the uh, executive, the the PTs, edit capabilities for for their assessments for people that are that are on them, that uh, that report to them that are getting assessed, and I can also give them. Um, uh, so view and edit capabilities. So you'll notice that in this one, if I wanted to look at this Terry Pritchard, I couldn't. Over here, I can. And in fact, I can edit it if I want to. Uh, the reason that, that you would want all assessors can edit any of their assessments. So if you look at an assessor, Dave Howard, I can, I can edit any assessment that I that I did, so I could edit this assessment. The reason I'd want to do that is often in the field, I'll um, I'll input the basic data from the assessment, including the summary and results. And then when I get uh, 
when I get home, I'll actually scan and put the uh, scan and put the um, a copy of the assessment in here. So uh, let's just. So I can I can go in here and add the assessment file later. So every assessment that goes in, you would have a copy of the uh, assessment sheet. And there's there's the there's the assessment sheet that was used on this assessment of me. And note that it doesn't have to be even be our form. So this one, this assessment for me was a WSF assessment um, against WSF uh, referee standards, and uh, and I got a I got a pass on it Tick there. So you can copy all of your all of your assessments into this uh, into this and the summary. Uh, he didn't bother doing the rest of it, so all he did was put in the put it in the file. Uh, so that's the assessments part of it, and um, so contact information. And here's here's another what I feel is a great part of it. Um, so under the document section, all of the documents that we've viewed today are here. And uh, here's, our, here's our first newsletter, which is here. And uh, all of the training modules are here. And then we have some restricted training modules. So the assessor training court is, is Restricted to potential um, provincial uh, assessors or national. Any, it, it's restricted to assessors, and this is the area that I would put the uh, um, the course stuff that uh, Spider. I think it was Spider was asking about. So I'd put that right in here in restricted training modules. Although, if we if we make it public, it could be uh, it could be put in in one of the other areas. And then we've got an admin section. So in here is all the is all the referees that we've got in the database to date. So if we look at me. So I'm a uh, regional referee, national assessor, gender male, province Ontario, and I'm a senior assessor. So we can. Um, what I was hoping to do was import any uh, of the new individuals and in the uh, from um, from the online course into this into this database. And they they come in as uh, as D level as uh, club level officials. Any um, David, Brad. Yep. Dave, what's the difference between senior assessor and national assessor, please? Um, it's it's a a national assessor would be able to. Uh, edit. Um, and it certainly edit anybody they've assessed, and uh, anybody that's moving from uh, provincial to national, they may not be able to um, view other 
other senior assessors, uh, um, other other assessors assessments. Not a not a two thousand percent sure on the difference, but uh, uh, for sure, um, a uh, provincial assessor uh, wouldn't be able to view uh, national national assessments unless they were a uh, they were classified as a senior assessor. The it's a level above national assessor, and it also gives yeah. access on this site. It it gives it gives access to all assessments. Thank you. Yes, the senior the senior assessor does. Now, for um, uh, let's see if I can find an example here. I think I've got some. Dave. Yep. Um. Could you just clarify for everybody that um, I don't know whether we can do it now, but our intent is to say that somebody who's managing the Ontario referees could put in their yes. search criteria Ontario, and all the referees would pop up for them. Yeah, that 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 intent is there. It's not in the system yet. No, so I know under, that. Yeah, under under search, uh, we're the other thing we're going to do is we're going to have reports in here. Uh, that'll be available to the uh, the provincial um, the PTs, and and they'll be able to print out all of their uh, individuals along with um, along with where they are in their progression from from one level to another. So you'd be able to print out all your officials, what level they're at, and what credits they've got towards the next level. Definitely part of the part of the plan. Um, so it, in terms of one of your initial questions, how do I get logged on here? Um, what you do is you register, uh, register yourself, and then uh, shoot me an email, and I'll set you up so that you have privileges to edit everybody, because uh, at your level. The, the executive uh, director's level, uh, Squash Ontario uh, levels, you should have access. So if we look at Jamie, uh, so I gave Jamie enough uh, enough privileges that he can edit. Uh, Dave, Dan here. Uh, Spider, Spider had a, a question. I think you might have just answered the first part of it. Um, his question was, who is uh, Squash Canada's go-to person to get a password? And I think you just said that's you. And then, and subsequently to receive guidance through navigating the process. Um, I'm, I'm probably your best guy, in, unless you have somebody close that you can, uh, that you can chat with. Um, but for Spider, for you to get set up, when you register here, you register, uh, you set your own password, and um, and then shoot me an email, and I'll bump bump your pri privileges up. So you can you can create your own password. The other thing, uh, what'll happen is when you register. It's going to send you a, an email asking you to confirm that you really signed up. So um, you'll need to click on that link to kind of finalize your registration. That's a fairly standard uh, uh, feature of, of any, uh, any of these login type things. The other thing is once you have, uh, once you have registered, if you click on I forgot my password, you you and you put in your name here, click on email link, it'll send you a link to reset your password. So once you've registered, once your name, once your email address is in the database, uh, to reset your password, all you need to do is is say I forgot my password, e click on email the link, and um, 
then check your email and it'll allow you to reset your password. Um, if you uh, click on this, so I'm in uh, contact, so go to the squashcanonofficial.com contact, uh, if you click on this, um, I'll get the email. Any other questions, comments? Hi, Dave. Brad again. Yep. To do with assessor equivalency, if we have yep. current provincial examiners, I yep. can't remember if you covered whether they need to take the assessor training course yes. to become a provincial assessor or they're automatically a provincial assessor because of previous experience. They're provincial assessors. We want them to take the course. So, uh, yes, they should take the course. Thank you. Anything else? I think we're... Uh, thanks for your time all, and I'll, uh, I'll turn it back to Dan for uh, any more uh, questions. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Thank you, Dave and committee.